Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and it's transfer time once again and some goings on today at West Bromwich Albion. We think two in, one big out. So the Slaven Bilic team is gradually being formed as West Brom go into their second year of parachute payments. That awkward dilemma year, do you still go for it or do you try and preempt? The iceberg that may come in two years' time when that money finally runs out and you're settled with all of those big contracts. We know Bilic so far. Um, in has come Kravinovic on loan in central midfield. Out have gone Craig Dawson to Watford and Jay Rodriguez to Burnley. Um, but the one that has really got the dominoes going today is Salomon Rondon. He has left for China and that means that West Brom have confirmed the signing of Kenneth Zahor from Cardiff for, we think, £8 million, although it's undisclosed, and agreed a fee, hasn't gone through yet, for Semi Ajayi from Rotherham, we think £1.5 million. Pounds. Um, so Rondon, first of all, we need to just mention because this is important in terms of wages gone and transfer fee in. Rondon went to Newcastle last year. Gail came the other way. Um, he's gone for what we think is £16 million. Pounds. It's a club record um, out to Dalian Yifang in China, who you, you will have read about um, uh, in the last month because Rafa Benitez has gone to manage them. So Benitez came straight for Rondon, obviously knew he was available, worked with him. I think he got 12 goals in the Premier League last season, so he should absolutely tear it up and make a shed load of money with Rafa in the Chinese Super League. And very much like um, all of those people who are watching who've bought houses, it's like a chain of houses. Um, one gets announced, that can be ticked off. And these other deals that are waiting in the background, pending this money or that player being gone, etc., etc., can then go ahead. So let's talk Kenneth Zahor, um, because he, I guess he's the replacement for Rondon, in as much as Rondon was holding that place in the squad. I know it wasn't actually Rondon that was there last year, but it was Gale. But think of, uh, think of it as an asset, uh, the chief centre forward asset in the West Brom squad. As soon as Gale went back, that became Rondon. So they've cashed in there and in comes Zahor. Big, powerful Danish striker, I think, six foot two. Pacey, can dribble as well, can finish. Good in the air, pretty decent um, all-round striker. So depending on what system you're going to use, um, he can do any number of things. If you watched my last video um, on the whole championship roundup of transfers, I did say Jay Rodriguez, probably the best all-rounder in the division as a forward last year. I know other players scored more goals and were better in other areas. but um, So maybe he is um, a direct replacement for Rodriguez. The truth is we don't know quite yet how Bilic is going to play this, so can't really say that but um seems to be in that ilk um he's only 25 but already played in Denmark Italy Belgium and Sweden um then a whole host of loans ending up at Cardiff um on loan and then he signs for them permanently in 1617 uh that season 29 games 12 goals five assists so decent return for his first year in English football. And in October of that year, in comes Neil Warnock to Cardiff. And when Neil Warnock comes into a second-tier club, that normally makes quite a big difference. Um, because we then know what happened in 17-18. Um, promotion for Cardiff, second place behind Wolves. Um, and he was the main striker there. 36 games, 9 goals, 5 assists. Don't be fooled by... The fact that that's under 10, because remember in the Warnock system, um, goals were shared around and a lot were scored from set plays. And more often than not, um, the big guy isn't the guy that actually gets to, to make the run. If you look, Sean Morrison got a decent total. Callum Patterson got absolutely loads. Um, uh, and 
I think the on the ground stuff, it was his job to play junior Hoylet in. So um, lots of different jobs that didn't actually involve him scoring goals, but still got nine. Um, when Cardiff came to Portman Road and I saw them play Ipswich, they won 1 0, and Zahor scored the only goal after um, Gary Medine punched the hole for him there. So um, into the Premier League and no joy really, no joy for Cardiff, they were relegated. Uh, for Zahor, 19 games, one goal, one assist. So is he going to sit in the pantheon of players that's pretty good in the Championship but not quite does it in the Premier League? That may not be fair um, because often a lot of these players, um, they like playing in a good team in the Championship and then they're playing in a uh, bottom three team in the in the Premier League and it is much harder to score, not necessarily their um, lack of quality. Um, so Zahor, like I said, presence, pace, power to West Brom. Um, there's always a little bit of a flag when you see a 25-year-old guy who's had already that many clubs. A few of them were loans. And I do remember at the start of Warnock's tenure, I don't know whether it was a motivational thing, but um, he did call out the work ethic and work rate of Zahor. So um, maybe he's a little bit more grown up now and that's not an issue anymore. But I just thought I would flag that from the research I have found in total 23 goals in 77 championship appearances. I guess that's proven. If that said um, closer to one in two, you would say he's definite championship caliber and he's going to get you the goals. So, um, and as I mentioned, the last season at Cardiff, a um, bit of a different um, back to goal role and um, helping in those decisive set plays that got Cardiff up. Um, I said on the last round, um, the roundup video, that West Brom desperately needed a striker. They literally had none the second Rondon departed, although we knew that that was going to happen. Um, remember last season, it was Barnes, Gail Rodriguez, up until um, Barnes went back to Leicester from the loan, and none of them are now there. So um, not only was Zahor vital, but they do need more bodies up front for sure. So expect Billich to bring, bring in a, another striker. Maybe that will be a lone player, or maybe they'll drop Another fee. Um, I think given the type of restructuring West Brom are doing, this type of signing does make sense. It's eight million. If you add up all of those fees now for Rondon, uh, Rodriguez, and Dawson, there's the uh, thick end of probably 25 million has come in. Um, you just got to remember though, it's 45 million first year, 35 second year. That props them up on a, you know, is 35 million more then um, the teams that don't get parachutes get in this division. So a significant more amount of money landing in West Brom's coffer than um, most of the other clubs in the division. But this type of restructuring needs to happen. I would assume that um, Kenneth Zahor comes to you much cheaper in terms of wages than um, Jay Rodriguez or Salomon Rondon does. So it seems to me... A pretty sensible second year um, championship transition and still a player that should do some damage and should get some goals again, depending on how Bilic is going to play and the chances that are created for him. So I think um, it's a thumbs up, but context is all because I think there's going to probably be another striker go in at West Brom. Speaking of other people going in at West Brom, this one's not confirmed yet, but should really be a formality now. The fee has been agreed for Semi Ajayi from West Brom. 1.5 million, um, so much, much cheaper than um, Zahor. And for that, assuming medical goes well and contract can be agreed, you get a very, very versatile player. Another big, powerful guy as well. Um, maybe a little bit more um, rangy than stocky as Zahor is, but um, certainly we saw Ajayi play centre-back, holding midfielder in front of the back four and an actual defensive central midfielder for Rotherham last year in their unsuccessful battle against relegation. Um, he's the second blue chipper for Rotherham to go out. Volks already went to Cardiff and Mr Warnock, so there's a nice um, synchronicity with that um, part of this whole transfer story. Um, and now Ajayi looks to be close to be done for West Brom. So I hope I don't get egg on my face and this one falls at the last, but it should be going 
through. Um, started off at Charlton, who seemed to have a conveyor belt of good young players these past years. Plucked away by Arsenal, didn't make it there. Um, goes to Cardiff then, loaned all over the place. Ends up at Rotherham, where he finishes the 16-17 season and is signed fully for 17-18 in which season um, Paul Warren takes Rotherham up from League One to the Championship. It's 42 appearances and a playoff winner for Ajayi. So he shows his durability. He gets a season of winning and he gets a season of experience in League One. Um, as I said, Rotherham went down last year, but a colossal 49 appearances in all competitions for Ajayi. And this is the interesting thing of how does Billich see him? Is this a centre-half? Is this a holding central midfield or uh, one in front of the back four? Um, who knows? Again, I've said it three times already. We don't know what Bilic is going to do. Or is this a versatile um, squad guy who's just going to fill in wherever holes are needed? I think he proved he was good enough for the championship last year. The one thing I would say is Rotherham's system particularly worked well for Ajayi. They were an aerial team. They played with a low block. It's easier, you would think, to defend in a low block. And I must say, when I saw them play Millwall earlier in the season, he sat in front of the back four, and his job was literally to just sweep stuff up and give it simple. And he did a great job. Look, he's not Patrick Vieira. You're not going to get too much um, incisive pass into his game. But certainly, he read the game, and he did all of that defensive stuff really, really well. Basically, what I'm saying is if Billich wants to play football, um, then Ajay is probably going to be a centre-back. Um, I guess he could play in a 4-2-3-1 with another central midfielder who was the passer and he was the destroyer. But um, he's not going to do what, say, Calvin Phillips or Morris Leitner did or Oli Norwood did last season um, in the centre midfield and actually make the play. That's not his game at all. Um, there is this kind of crazy outlier last season where at the end of February, Jay scored six goals in five games. So um, who knows whether um, whether if he does go in as a midfielder, he seems to have some kind of eye for goal arriving and finishing. Um, I think he finished the season with eight goals as well, which for someone who played probably half the season at centre-half is very, very impressive. Tally, um, this could be a real, real bargain. If you spend 1.5 million on someone and they play 30 plus championship games, that's kind of a bargain by definition, assuming that they do a good job. Just a bit curious as to whether he's a squad guy or whether he's going to be a starter and or what position he plays in. So definitely a capable footballer with good durability and a fair amount of experience now. And really... Um, I'm going to say proven in the championship. I know I'll get comments that say, yeah, he's proven, but Rotherham got relegated. But I think he did his job that he was asked to do well last year. And it is possible that you can do your job well and be in a relegated team. So I think those two things can be true at the same time. Um, really interested to know people's thoughts in the comments on how West Brom are now managing the transition from year one parachute to year two. Um, we know that the advantage should still be there financially, but we know that cost-cutting needs to be made. Um, if you look at it, it's Barnsgale, Rodriguez, Dawson, Rondon out, Kravinovic, Zahor, Ajayi in. So uh, without being unkind to those players, you are trading down in terms of um, expense each week on wages and probably quality. So what I want to know from people in the comments is, are they managing this well? Is that too much of a drop-off in quality? Do you think it's a drop-off in quality um, at all? We're probably going to need um, one or two more players to make that comparison totally. But um, the job that people have to do in year two of parachutes is to cut costs and keep the quality of their squad as high as possible. And it may turn out that um, Bilic has done a very good job of that or it may turn out that the quality's dropped off. I'd be very interested to know um, what people think um, if you're doing an apples to apples comparison of Jay Rodriguez to Kenneth Zahor and Craig Dawson to Semi Ajay. Um, is that fair or not? I don't know, but let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and is this type of turnover of player and the squad you're seeing Bilic assembling? I must admit, I don't know a lot about Kravinovic. I'll reserve judgment to have seen him play. Is it going to be good enough to be pushing at the top? of the table like West Brom were for a lot of last season. Um, 
without ever really looking like they were going to get automatic, it has to be said. So let me know what you think in the comments. Sorry, I've gone a bit deep. 15 minutes worth on West Brom there, but a couple of interesting signings in, and it's touch wood that Ajay actually goes through. I'm just going to stick this video up because I'm off to um, watch Colchester versus Ipswich in a friendly tonight, so I need to get this done. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, Rotherham fan or Cardiff fan from the outgoing teams or a West Brom fan particularly on what is coming in. Um, stuff is now starting to happen. The season really kind of starts tonight. I'm at Colchester Ipswich. Um, I'm going to look after Ipswich, keep going with my championship stuff and then we'll get into the championship games and I'll try and see some Ipswich alongside. So what I'm saying is if you are a championship fan, um, keep watching. This channel will mainly be championship and I'll funnel my Ipswich stuff towards the Blue Monday podcast if you're an Ipswich fan watching. Obviously, um, they departed my beloved division last season, so a bit of a transition that people will need to get used to um, this season. So hit subscribe for that championship content. Hit the bell. I'm sure there's going to be a shed load of transfer stuff to talk about, possibly Aiden Flint by the end of the day as well. So I may be back um, soon talking about that. Um, follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom. As always, thank you for watching. Please get involved in the comments. Give me your knowledge. Don't give me your insults. We know what the comments can be like on YouTube. And I've learned a hell of a lot from conversing and chatting to um, fans of these teams. I promise I read every single one, even if I don't have the time to reply to all of them. So it's much appreciated. Thanks for watching. Um, West Brom starting to change. Interesting times. Over and out.